All right. Okay, so recording is on, the closed captioning is on, and I will start with the intros. So hello, and thank you for joining the first annual New Jersey Youth Transitions Conference. My name is April DiPietro. I'm the Community Resource Director for the Camden CMO, and I will be your host for this session. The session today is by NJ Abel on Save While You Preserve SSI and Medicaid. I am joined today by our panelist, Ursula Baker, with uh, New Jersey ABLE, who will be our presenter today. A couple of housekeeping items before we get started. In this format, all participants are muted by default. If you would like to communicate with myself or the panelists, please use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. Questions will be answered at the conclusion of the presentation. A recording of these presentations will be made available within the next few days on our website. That website is www.njyouthtransition.life. The session is also being closed captioned. In order to activate the closed captioning feature, please click on the live transcript button at the bottom of your screen and click show subtitles. If you need technology support at any point during the conference, you can access our live tech support Zoom room sponsored by Richard West with ATAC. The Zoom room is available on our website. Please be patient as there may be many people seeking help at the same time. If you are having techno technology difficulties now, please first check your sound and try signing out and signing back into this session before visiting the technology support Zoom room. Oftentimes this fixes the issue. Please note that we have a hard stop five minutes before the top of our next hour in order for the host to prepare for the next room. I will now hand over our presentation to Ms. Ursula Baker. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, April. I hope everyone can hear me. Good afternoon. Again, as my name is Ursula Baker, I serve as the Information and Referral Unit Supervisor at the Division of Disability Services, as well as the representative for the ABLE program for the state of New Jersey. So the division, I'm going to jump right into the division's mission um, is to provide a single point of entry for those seeking disability related information. I'm um, sorry, are you, are you sharing your screen? Not yet. Okay, all right, just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Okay, sure. Thank you. Um, and our mission is to share that information and promote maximum independence and the full participation of people with disabilities within all aspects of community life. But today I'm here to share basic information about the New Jersey ABLE program and its benefits. And just give me one minute, I'm gonna share my screen. Fingers crossed. Can you guys see my screen? I hope it, you can. It says Ursula Baker has shared her screen, but it's still black. Okay. There it is. It popped up. Great. Okay. So we're going to jump right in here. I want to hide this and make sure you guys can see my screen. Going down. There we go. That's what I want you guys. We can see it, or at least I can. <laughs> okay. All right. So what is ABLE? ABLE allows individuals with disabilities to open special savings accounts for disability-related expenses. The best part about this program is that the funds in this account do not count towards the asset resource limit established by means-based benefit programs such as Medicaid, Supplemental Inc. Security Income, HUD, even SNAP benefits. The funds in these accounts are intended to supplement, not replace those government benefits. ABLE accounts are easy to establish, easy to use, they have low cost, and the assets grow tax-free. Now, who is eligible for ABLE? To be eligible, individuals must meet two requirements. 
reason being that your disability was present before the age of 26, and one of the following must be true. You are eligible for SSI or SSDI because of a disability. You experience blindness as determined by the Social Security Act, or you have a similarly severe disability with a written diagnosis from a licensed physician that can be produced if requested. Proof of eligibility is not required to open an account. However, you should maintain a record of your diagnosis, benefits verification letter, or other relevant documents in the event that you are required to prove eligibility at a later date. What can ABLE funds be used for? Good question. The funds can be used for qualified disability expenses that fall into these 11 broad categories you see before you. For example, education and training. You can use the funds for tuition, pay for a tutor, or other educational resources. Housing, you can purchase a home with these funds, pay your rent, you can even make your own home modifications. Transportation, these funds can be used for mass transit, Uber or Lyft, or for your own vehicle expenses. And for employment, you may wanna use your funds for, to get some job-related training, use it for job development, or even starting your own business. Any expense that is incurred as a result of living with a disability and is intended to improve quality of life falls under the definition of qualified disability expenses. Some other benefits of having an ABLE account is that there are special tax advantages. ABLE savings may grow and be withdrawn tax-free provided that those savings are used for qualified disability-related expenses that we just went over on the previous slide. Earnings may compound federally tax-deferred, maximizing the return on your investment. What this means is that any earnings made on the money that is invested does not get reported on the account owner's tax return yearly, making it a tax-free saving. As stated before, there is no impact on current government benefits. ABLE assets will be disregarded or receive favorable treatment when determining eligibility for most important means-tested benefits. The two most common, supplemental security income and Medicaid. For supplemental security income benefits, balances of $100,000 or less are excluded from your SSI resource limit. Anything over $100,000, SSI cash benefits will be suspended, but your Medicaid will continue. And with Medicaid eligibility, ABLE assets are disregarded. They are not considered legally an asset. So no amount saved affects your Medicaid eligibility. I must mention that New Jersey ABLE is subject to a Medicaid payback provision. This means any assets remaining in the ABLE account when a beneficiary dies can be used to reimburse a state for Medicaid payments that were made on behalf of the beneficiary after the creation of the ABLE account. Um, the state is required. They would have to file a claim for those funds. There's nothing for you to do. 
I'd like to share with you um, some ABLE facts, some things you may have already heard before, but we'd like to just go over them again briefly. So if you have any questions. So the designated beneficiary of the account is the account owner. So although another person such as a parent, guardian, or person with power of attorney may be allowed signature authority over the account. There has been some recent changes in tax law around who can and who cannot open an able account. And there is a hierarchy, but I just want to let you know that New Jersey is still working with the National ABLE Alliance and our program manager, a census to implement these changes. Income earned by the account will not be taxed as long as those withdrawals are used for those qualified disability related expenses. The contributions themselves are not to be intended to be tax deductible. Although some states may allow deductions against state income taxes, New Jersey does not. However, the funds within the account grow tax-free. Contributions must be made using post-tax dollars. And because it's already taxed, it will not be tax deductible for purposes of federal tax. You can open an account in any state that allows outside residents. And currently there are 43 states that, including DC, that have uh, ABLE accounts. We hope you open yours in New Jersey if you, re you reside in New Jersey. Another fact is that ABLE accounts are user-friendly. You can open an account online with as little as $25. You can access your account 24 hours a day, seven days a week from a personal computer, your tablet, or your mobile device. You can also access your account by phone or online. Contribute more and you pay less. So New Jersey ABLE allows you to contribute $15,000 per year maximum. You can have a lifetime contribution, but there is a limit of $305,000. There are low fees, the annualized Investment costs on assets per investment option range from 0.34 to 0.38%, depending on which investment options you select. And you will see uh, more about the investment options on our next slide. Each account is charged an account maintenance fee of $15 each quarter, which is $60 annually, or $5 a month. And this fee can be count discounted if you select email delivery for your statements and confirmations. So it makes it a little less every year. Um, and we are still trying to go green as a state, go paperless, so there is a small discount for doing so. And as with any investment, anytime you make changes, there are going to be transaction fees, you can't get around them, but it's a minimal transaction fee. New Jersey ABLE offers a range of investment options to match both your goals and comfort with risk. As this chart shows, you have from aggressive options seeking higher returns to conservative investments that place capital preservation over growth. New Jersey ABLE has choices for every investor. If you choose to go the investment route, we recommend that you talk to a financial advisor or planner to determine the best investment for your need. You also have the option of contributing to an FDIC federally 
self-insured checking account through Fifth Third Bank National Association. That lets you withdraw money using a debit card or by writing a check. The money that is invested in this option is tied to the ABLE account. Let's talk about some of the provisions that come with New Jersey ABLE. Here is the 529 college savings rollover provision. This allows funds in a 529 college savings account to be rolled over into a 529A account, otherwise an ABLE account. Um, the ABLE account beneficiary must be either the beneficiary of the 529 college savings account or a family member of the beneficiary of the 529 savings account. The funds rolled over from this account to an ABLE account are subject to that annual contribution limit that we talked about, that $15,000 cap for any given year provided no other contributions into the account have been made during that tax. Another provision is the eligibility for savers credit, also known as the retirement savings contributions credit. This allows a tax credit to low and moderate income taxpayers who make contributions the retirement account, such as an IRA, a 401k, or a 403b. And you can see the eligibility and criteria that need to be met for this credit. Um, and we also ask if you have more questions about the savers credit to go to the IRS website. They have a whole uh, section to, to this saver's credit. There is an, a, another provision, which is a called Able to Work Act provision. And this provision allows ABLE account beneficiaries who work and earn income to contribute above that $15,000 annual contribution limit. It's up they can contribute up to the annual federal poverty limit, which is $12,760 for the year 2021, or up to the amount of their earned income, whichever is less. The contributions above the 15,000 annual contribution limit would be limited to contributions made specifically by the account beneficiary into their ABLE account. And the additional contribution would only be allowed if the, per, the beneficiary is not participating whatsoever in his or her employer-based retirement fund. How does one go about opening an ABLE account? It's very easy to enroll. You can do it a couple of ways. You can visit the savewithable.com to learn more about the program. You can request an information kit or on, enroll online. You can call the toll-free number that's listed there to speak with a program representative Monday through Friday from eight to five Eastern Standard Time. You can also email them any questions you may have about New Jersey ABLE. And you can also download the application and print it and mail the application in to the address that you see before you. I wanna mention, as I mentioned before, the Ascensus is New Jersey's contracted vendor known as the Ascensus College Savings Record Keeping Services, LLC. That is New Jersey's program manager. The Division of Disability Services serves as the marketing and outreach representative for New Jersey ABLE. We have crafted some frequently asked questions. 
maybe one of yours is listed here. Um, hopefully it is, but if it isn't, we're gonna have a Q&A section at the end of this uh, presentation. So who can open an ABLE account? Eligible individuals can open the account for themselves or an authorized individual can open an account on their behalf. As I mentioned, there may be some changes due to the recent tax laws, but we will definitely keep you posted on that. Who qualifies as an authorized representative? This can be a person appointed as a power of attorney or someone appointed by the court to have financial authority to transact on behalf of the individual. Do I have to prove that withdrawals are for qualified disability expenses. Not at the time of the withdrawal. However, annually, New Jersey ABLE will report the total amount of your withdrawals to the IRS and the date and amount of each of your withdrawals to the Social Security Administration. In the event that either entity wants to verify the expenses, it's recommended that you keep detailed records. Can I have more than one New Jersey ABLE account? Unfortunately, no. You are limited to one ABLE account, except in the case of that rollover we spoke about uh, from another qualified ABLE program. This extends beyond New Jersey ABLE to include accounts in other ABLE programs. In the case of a rollover to an ABLE account for the same account owner, the account from which the funds are withdrawn must be closed within 60 days of the withdrawal. So at, no, at one time you can have two ABLE accounts for 60 days, but they have to be closed in, within that time frame. Can friends and family make contributions into my account? Absolutely. Anyone can contribute directly to your New Jersey ABLE account. No matter though who contributes, you, the account owner or authorized individual retain control over the account. How often can I change my investments? You can do this twice per calendar year. You can change your investment options for any new contributions at any time. What's the difference? Oh, I gotta go back. Um, will my ABLE savings account affect my HUD housing subsidy? Some of us are in HUD housing. Um, per the mandate of the ABLE Act for the purpose of determining eligibility and continued occupancy, the US Department of Housing and Urban Development will disregard amounts in the designated beneficiaries or individuals ABLE account. Can I have both an ABLE account and special needs trust or pooled income trust? Yes, you can. And some folks wanna know what's the difference between an ABLE account and a special needs trust or a pooled income trust. Well, you have more control with the New Jersey ABLE account. The account beneficiary is the account owner. The account owners have the ability to make choices and control their fund funds as circumstances change. There's a lot more flexibility. ABLE accounts offer various options, including the checking account and debit card options, which may be more flexible and accessible than other types of trust and savings accounts. The cost of establishing an ABLE account is likely to be considerably less than either a special needs trust or pooled income trust. And the money that is invested in the checking option is invested into an actual checking account that is tied to the ABLE account. Any deposits into the checking option need to come into the ABLE account. I'd like to share some ABLE stories with you. So 
uh, this is a parent of an ABLE account owner. Uh, Lauren is her son's strongest advocate. It's her number one job. That is why she opened an ABLE account in February 2017 for her son, Stephen, who has trisomy 9 mosaic, a rare chromosomal disorder. Funds in Stephen's account will be used to save for his future and to replace the family's aging van with an, a wheelchair accessible one. As a parent, Lauren says, Abel has given me peace of mind in knowing I can set my son up financially for his current and future needs without risking benefits. Creating an ABLE account is not time consuming and is very easy to do from the comfort of your own home. You really have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Even small contributions over time can have a significant impact on quality of life. The next one is an ABLE account owner is Katie. She's 28 and she works full time and has Medicaid through New Jersey Workability Program. She has cerebral palsy and is using her ABLE account to save for disability related equipment and to build her dream HGTV quality accessible home. Katie says the process of getting an ABLE account is pretty painless. It seems counterintuitive to everything we have been told. I'm a living, breathing example that this does not count against you. I'm getting the same services as before. It doesn't count against you. And unlike the trust, it isn't expensive. Our last story is uh, another ABLE account owner is Edward, who is 31 and ABLE eligible due to a spinal cord injury from a hit and run car accident when he was 17 years old. He has an MBA and is working two part-time jobs. He's using his ABLE account to save up for vehicle modif modifications and to finally move out of his parents' house and into his own accessible housing. Edward writes, ABLE has allowed me to start saving without penalizing or jeopardizing my benefits. My parents worry what will happen to me when they are no longer able to help or they have died. Abel gives them some peace of mind about my future. Plus, unlike a special needs trust that, uh, plus unlike a special needs trust that must be controlled by a trustee or trustees, Abel gives me a person with a disability control over my finances and increase independence. And Edward is, ex and is a, an example showing that you don't have to be under the age of 26 to be eligible and a benefit from the program. Here are some uh, ABLE resources that we refer to often to get the most updated information on what's going on with ABLE nationally. The division is also, we also serve as part of the National ABLE Alliance so that we're staying up with all the ABLE trends and all the information that's out there. The Social Security Administration has a whole page dedicated to ABLE accounts and you can also email them for any ABLE support questions that you may have. And again, the IRS, you have questions regarding those provisions and those tax credits we talked about, we recommend that you uh, use the link there to get more information about tax. This is my contact information, and this concludes my part of the presentation. So. I'm going to click on, do my best to, st I'm going to stop sharing and make sure I can click on, I see there is a Q&A. Um, if April is available, yes, there I see her still. I saw a Q&A mm -hmm. and it just disappeared. Do you see that? Yes, let me I stop do. sharing this. Um, let me it says, is NJ able more for people who don't qualify for DDD? 
how does NJ ABLE benefit someone who is receiving DDD and having these things paid for by DDD? Okay, so there, the, I, I'm going to assume that DDD is, is that a representative payee? DDD, to my understanding, in this case, is being referred to as Division of Developmental Disabilities. Okay. Adult DDD services. Okay. So if they are not the representative payee, then the, the benefit, again, is someone who has SSI, receiving SNAP, Medicaid, they can still use the New Jersey ABLE account to save money and not lose their benefit. Now, so if, it, go ahead. I was gonna say, it sounds like if this writer, cause it says anonymous attendee, if they have adult DDD services, they can still access NJ ABLE. It can that happen at the same time. Okay, understood. That is correct. Yes, Sorry. I hope that was what they meant. Are you able to pull up the, the Q&A because it doesn't seem to allow me uh, let to me change see. this question to answered <laughs> live? So it looks like that's the first thing that froze on my end. Oh, okay. I see, oh, here we go. Can direct deposit cash be added to an ABLE account? As long as it's post-tax dollars, you can, it can be deposited into an ABLE account. I hope, did you guys hear that answer? I, I hope, I don't know if I have to click on answer live. So let me, I'll click it on this. Does an ABLE account have a debit card? You have the option of the checking account that has a debit card option with it, or you can write a check. And these are great answers, questions. Thank you very much. You see any other questions? I don't see. No, my, my Q&A is still frozen on the first uh, question okay. posted back on 1224. Um, so if your Q&A on your end is still empty, then perhaps we don't have any questions at the moment. Uh, oh, here's have one. A I okay, just awesome. One popped up. Thank you, guys. Can an account holder use the account card personally for daily needs? As long as it fits under that definition of qualified disability, related expenses. It's going to help you as well as your disability remain in the community and live and function on, on a daily basis that it's so broad that yes, I would say you're using it personally for you that's gonna benefit you um, and help you with your disability. I wanna give an example someone had asked, um, can you purchase a, a, a mobile device? If you're gonna need that to communicate with let's say someone who has to pick you up and take you to your doctor's appointment, then that is a qualified disability expense, an iPhone and you need internet or, or um, the Wi-Fi that you have to pay for and you're gonna use that from the ABLE account, that is something that's going to help you and your disability to remain in the community and get what you need. I hope that answers your question. Any others? Up. Okay. Are, can you hear my answers on your end? April? On my end, yes. Oh, Hopefully good. the panel, the attendees can as well. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm going to say thank you again 
the large number that came out to this conference and to my presentation. Um, and I hope that we're able to do this again. If you have any questions, you need um, the PowerPoint, somehow you can get in touch with the host, the New Jersey Youth Transition Conference host, please reach out to me, do not hesitate. We're available Monday through Friday to answer any questions, not just New Jersey ABLE, but any disability related questions. Excellent, you did a fantastic job, Ms. Baker. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you to the attendees who uh, tapped in today. This again has been the first annual New Jersey Youth Transitions Conference. We are anticipating doing this every year for the foreseeable future. Uh, hopefully one day we can be in person, but a uh, big shout out to um, NJ Abel and to Ms. Baker for presenting valuable information to us today. Just to recap for those of you who may joined um, and missed the intro, all of the webinars that have been hosted yesterday and the rest of today will be uploaded um, they have all been recorded. They'll be uploaded to our website, which is www.njyouthtransition.life. Give us a few days to upload that content, but it is our hope that you can continue to use the New Jersey Transition Conference website to stay connected, to tap into recordings if you had to miss a session for whatever reason. Um, thank you to all of our panelists, all of the presenters. Uh, there's also a vendor village on the um, New Jersey website. So any of the resources across the state of New Jersey that service our IDD population, folks with intellectual developmental disabilities of various ages, youth and adults, those uh, resources are available on the New Jersey Youth Transition Conference website. Um, thank you again, Ms. Baker, really appreciate it. Valuable, valuable information. Um, if there are no other questions, again, Unfortunately, I can't see them, so I'm relying on you, Ms. Baker. If there's no new questions, we can feel free to end a few moments early, give our attendees an opportunity to take a short break before the next, the next webinar begins. And thank you, thank you so much again. Thank you, take okay. care. Take care, everyone. <laughs> I don't believe I can hit end, so if you can hit end for yeah, the whole session. <laughs> thank you. Yes, actually it won't let me. <laughs> it won't let you hit end, even though you're the co-host. Okay. Yes. I'm um, clicking it. I hit X. Will it go maybe? No. I don't know. Um, okay. I'm going to try to do a, a hard shut off on my computer. Oh. So if it abruptly just ends, thank you. And uh, <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, guys. Yeah, well, it's frozen. <laughs> yeah. No problems, only solutions, right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Oh, it's funny. So weird. <laughs> it's still recording. Can you, can you do that? Let's see. <laughs> Let's shut my computer off. <laughs> Hi guys, are you guys frozen? Yes. <laughs> May maybe we should just log out and log back in. Do you want to give that a try? Yeah, I'm trying to, it said, here we go. Oh, no, that doesn't do it either. The quit, quit Zoom. Like I right clicked and it said quit. <laughs>